The invasion, the attack that Russia promised would never happen, has now started. Russian tanks and troops rolled across the border, and a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. As the war in Ukraine has begun, just minutes after Russian President Vladimir Putin announced a special military operation in eastern Ukraine. The Ukrainians are fighting for their homeland. They're massively well motivated. The largest humanitarian crisis in Europe since World War II. Ukraine, a nation once full of diverse landscapes and well-preserved culture, is now torn apart by war, destruction, and the suffering of its people. This humanitarian catastrophe is pulling apart families and forever changing their lives. According to a report by the United Nations, more than 13 million Ukrainians have fled their homes since Russia's invasion of their country. The first bomb dropped on February 24th. Ukrainian citizen Sasha, her husband, and 17-year-old daughter made the difficult decision to leave their home city of Kiev and escape to a small, remote village in Ukraine to figure out their next steps. We decided what to do, what, what if uh, something happened with the light, with the water, we start to discuss all these small things, how to survive here. And then we saw in the, in the uh, window airplane fell down in the, in the fire. Sasha's family's decision to leave together came too late. The next day, soldiers were stationed all over the village. Sasha and her daughter would leave for Hungary with her husband staying behind. Every day since they separated, Sasha calls her husband, hoping he is still safe. This unsettling, constant state of worry is a direct result of Russian President Vladimir Putin's assault on her home country. Only devil can kill kids and destroy schools and fight uh, with hospitals. He, he told his people to destroy Ukrainian, just totally. On one side, I, I'm really, really uh, in pain because of my country and my people. Another uh, side, I, I'm glad that Putin's uh, time is over I, soon. Yet, amidst the chaos, a glimmer of hope. Neighboring countries like Hungary offer Ukrainian refugees like Sasha and her daughter with safety, protection, and assistance. One such area, Zahoni, Hungary, sits next to the Ukrainian border, making its train station a strategic place for Ukrainian families to escape to. On the first day of the war, the city managed to organize a shelter for 6,000 people, which has been in operation since. An international effort, UNHCR volunteers from all over the world greet the incomers and help them to get situated along with the Spanish and Hungarian Red Cross. Critical resources like medicine, baby supplies, and more are provided. The mayor of this small town has been instrumental in creating the elaborate system of refugee aid despite the challenges they first face. To accommodate the high number of refugees, the mayor set up a large tent outside the train station to serve warm food. A play area inside is equipped with many toys for children, and the tent's walls are adorned with hundreds of pieces of hopeful children's artwork. Mindenki úgy jön be a sátorba, hogy nem tudja, nem tudja, hogy hova érkezett, és nem tudja, hogy mit várt tőlük. És azt látom, hogy amikor elmennek, akkor köszönettel elmennek el is. After receiving a hot meal, many refugees find a place to lay down just five minutes away, where they may stay as long as needed. A 60-year-old school building was transformed into a dormitory. Despite being in operation for four months, the desire to help prevails amongst the citizens of the home. We will do everything we do every day. It's not a war situation, but we work with children and children. So it's somewhere in our genes, so we can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
és ezt szeretettel csináljuk. This volunteer has been working in social welfare for years. However, this particular volunteer work is not something she ever expected. Hát igazából erre nem számított senki sem, tehát ez felfoghatatlan még most is számomra, hogy, hogy egy háború helyzet miatt kell itt lennünk, és így kell segítséget nyújtani. One of the major difficulties faced by all volunteers is responding to the emotional and psychological effects left on the refugees. Those crossing the border mainly consist of women, their children, and the elderly, who are all likely exhausted and scared of the unknown. Nagyon sok olyan anyukával találkoztunk, aki kilátáson, hogy látott, látszott rajta kilátáson, ahol érkeztek két-három kisgyerekkel, és uh, nekik a igazdalása egy kicsit a bizalom kialakítása, hogy nyugodjanak, hogy jó helyre kerültek. Nagyon nehéz volt. Sokszor találkoztunk olyan öregekkel is, akik uh, kerültek Magyarországon, nem is tudták, hogy külföldön vannak. De is volt 85-90 éves nénike is, aki, aki nem tudta, hogy most éppen hol van, és nekik kellett szállást találni. While supporting the refugees' mental health to the best of their abilities, the volunteers also continue to manage unexpected events occurring on and off the tracks. Volt egy dolog, találkoztunk a születéssel, találkoztunk a halála. Volt akinek, aki itt született meg és neki kellett elindítani a papírjait, és volt egy bácsi, aki itt halt meg és neki pedig a mamasztását kellett. All of this support would not have been possible without the donations contributed by the citizens and the mayor. As a result of their virtuous efforts, this train station has been vital to the survival of many families such as Andras's. Andras now lives in Hungary, traveling back and forth between the border to get his family the supplies they need. <laughs> With prices rising out of control, it is harder for him to afford the products his family needs, making any donation that much more valuable. Andras is not alone in his struggles. In four months of operation, 239,065 other refugees have arrived at the station all facing similar challenges. Many of these refugees take the next available train station to Budapest with little to no knowledge of their next steps in the bustling city. Ordinary citizens have taken incredible initiative to bring a sense of security and normalcy into the lives of these Ukrainians. One particular group shops weekly for daily essentials like hygiene products and non-perishables using donations. Volunteer Alexander Kovachkin is still in shock by the support they have received. It's kind of magic. <laughs> On this particular day, 35 bags were distributed to families, mostly mothers and daughters. On March 1st, a bomb landed in one such mother's yard, Kate from Kharkiv. Her neighbor's cars were ablaze and the building was severely damaged. Despite the windows of her own car being shot through, she was able to drive into Budapest, Hungary and share her story. I'm lucky to have my family, my husband and my son here with me. But my mother and uh, my husband's mother are in Kharkiv. They don't want to move. They believe every day, they believe that the war will end tomorrow. And so they are waiting. Waiting like uh, the house uh, near them is on fire and she's sitting in her apartment watching it and waiting for the end of the war. She doesn't want to leave the city. My uh, husband's uh, mother was in the subway for about two months. It was very difficult and um, Russia was bombing the city and she was in the train in the underground station and when they bombed it, um, even the train was like jumping. They, f they felt it just uh, in the metro. So. Um, it's very difficult. Uh, people are running away from the cities. Some of them are living in the basement without any food, uh, making their food on fires near their yards. So I can't say it even in words, it's just difficult. It's strange. It's hot. Given Kate's hardships, her time in Budapest and the support she has received has brought a sense of peace to Kate's life. <sighs> I have no war here. 
uh, I don't see any war, I don't see anything, I don't hear anything about the war. So it's nice, uh, and it's nice because people are helping us a lot, and uh, I feel safe, uh, not just for me, but for my son, my little son. He's four, and I'm lucky, and he is lucky not to see all of this happening in Ukraine. This feeling of security is exactly what these organizations are seeking to provide. Another organization, Parasolka Budapest, does so by adding a burst of color to the lives of refugee children with art classes. As a result of donations made after discovering the charity's Facebook page, the organization was transformed into an engaging experience for this community. Evgeny is one of the many volunteers who has been instrumental in this transformation. Something to be done. You know, I don't consider it. I'm doing something extra good. Okay, so right, I'm organizing this, but uh, you know, the people who is doing good is the people who give us the money, is the teachers, you know. With donations raised, the organization can purchase art supplies and take the Ukrainian children on field trips, such as to the zoo. The sole mission of the volunteers and teachers is to provide a safe haven for all these children. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to make people forget about the war, about the kids. The kids who don't really understand the war. So uh, I'm trying not to, to bring some bad memories. Like if they draw in, I ask the teacher to tell them to draw some happy things. You know, this is the whole point. So yes, like this, uh, I'm trying to make them forget about what's happened to them. Like the, the slogan of our group, if you can say this, it's we cannot bring them peace, but we can bring them happiness. Clearly, this is a sentiment held by all who are helping those affected by the war. These extraordinary efforts across Hungary have helped countless Ukrainians and have served as an inspiration to many volunteers. Unfortunately, the war rages on and more help is needed. Oh